software engineer at SoftServe. And uh, first of all, uh, Anastasia, let me uh, let me know if you see my screen. Yeah, everything is okay. Okay, okay, wonderful. So before we move on to the main topic, please, I need the responses in the chat. The, just to check the level of familiarity or the proficiency of the topic, machine learning. So uh, please put it in the chats uh, where 0% is I know nothing about it and 100% is I kind of know how it works and I use it at work. Wow, 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 wow. Zero, 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 minus one, 20, 10, 50. Great. Great. Uh, yeah, that, that was I, I was about to, to, to tell you that this uh, uh, lecture will be the most uh, interesting for you if your level of familiarity is from zero to 40 of to 50 percent, uh, something like this. And uh, uh, yeah, we will uh, speak today not about my work, but about my hobby. So I I must disappoint you at first. I'm not an expert in machine learning. I just uh, didn't forget how it is to be a newbie, but I um, uh, completed several courses of, email, of ML and I used uh, played with some ML models in, uh, in my pet projects. So uh, I know Python, I know JavaScript and Python a bit. So maybe at the end of the uh, uh, lesson, we will uh, briefly look at some JavaScript and Python code. Uh, oh, uh, one more thing, I do not pretend to be fully accurate. So many things will be simplified. So don't blame me on that. All questions, uh, I will try to answer them at the end. Please be active. Use your chat uh, so uh, to answer my questions because I will sometimes uh, check whether you are sleeping or not. And, and uh, well, I'm counting on your answers. So let, let, let's get to, to, to the main topic. Uh, what is the, uh, right now, what is the traditional programming? Uh, when we are feeding uh, some, uh, some algorithm to, to the computer, and we want uh, the computer to behave exactly as we as we explicitly programmed it. For example, we are telling uh, the machine some kind of, you, I will feed you a number, you have to multiply it and return the result back. Okay, I got it. So I will give you seven and the result is 14. Uh, wonderful. Uh, unlike traditional programming, what is machine learning? Machine learning is a science of getting computers to learn without, it's incredibly important, without getting uh, explicitly programmed. So we are giving a bunch of examples and the correct questions. It is not always the case, but let's for simplicity uh, accept that it is a case. So for example, we are giving him three examples. If I give you 10, uh, the result should be 20. If I give you zero, the result should be zero. For minus one, you should return minus two. You got the idea, you got the pattern, right? Yep. So if I give you seven, the machine responds that the result probably the most likely is 14. Um, so uh, it is, uh, in, in, in so sometimes it can, of course, it can cause some, uh, some difficulties uh, as we see it uh, concerning machine learning, as we see it on the right side. It is, uh, by the way, it is the, the problem of only one example. If you are giving only one example, it is just not enough for a model to learn. It's actually pretty close to how human is learning. So we are not uh, giving a baby a lot of instructions. It just goes to the field, may, made some actions and um, uh, give, getting the result. So uh, we have to, to put, uh, numerous examples on that on which the uh, model can be uh, can can learn actually uh, well the machine learning can solve uh, ex extremely large number of different problems i don't think we uh, we will we will stop on this uh, some of them is identification of spam in your google inbox 
customer segmentation, recognition of uh, video and image, sentiment analysis is, for example, when you uh, feed some bunch of text and the uh, model returns how much informal or formal it is. Uh, is it uh, easy to read this text or not? Uh, and so on, level of, of complexity. Uh, there is something uh, it, it, you just cannot explicitly program or it is uh, incredibly hard to do this. Uh, yeah, and pretty much it is the uh, new ways of, uh, of solving problems that previously it just couldn't be approached. Uh, but as we will soon later, the machine learning is just uh, and an intersection between algorithms and maths. Um, okay, we will get into that soon. So, but right now I, I need a volunteer. Among all the participants, I need a volunteer who will help me with my next part. Uh, so the volunteer may just unmute uh, him or herself and let me know. It won't hurt, I, I swear. Okay, I can be. Okay, okay. Uh, Natalia, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Thanks. Thanks for being being so brave to be to to be a volunteer. So right now, I want you to pick the number, any number between zero and one thousand. Of course, uh, don't tell me this number. Any number uh, be between zero and 1,000. Okay. Okay, great. And right now I will try to guess the number. It's actually a kind of popular game, but with some uh, small changes. Uh, I will try to guess this number. Uh, with each my attempt, you will have to, to give me the feedback. Uh, should I go up or down? Mm -hmm. And the uh, the approximate distance from my uh, attempt to your picked number. For example, right. I, 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 if you just picked I don't know ten, and I picked uh, nine hundred, you are telling you should go down, and the distance is let's let's measure it by coldness, cold, moderate, or hot. So it's cold. Right. Okay. Right. So uh, so two two inputs from you to me. Okay. Uh, so my first guess five hundred. Up, cold, Up, warmish, uh, <laughs> warm. Uh huh. Cold but warmish. Okay. Uh, Eight hundred. Up, warm. Up and warm. Great. Uh, Eight hundred and fifty. Down and warm. Uh huh. Okay. Eight hundred and thirty. Up and hot. Okay. Eight hundred and forty. Down and very hot. Uh huh. Great. Uh, eight hundred and forty and thirty-seven. Yes. Wow. Exactly. Great. Great. Uh, thanks a lot. That's all I, I wanted to, uh, to 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 play. So th thanks once again, Natalia, and congrats. You just all became the experts in machine learning. So. Applause to all of you. Of course, I am just kidding, guys, but uh, there is a vestige of truth in every joke. Uh, so what we just did, uh, I initialized my guess with a random number. We ran through some several iterations. On each iteration, I received a feedback from uh, about how, how close I am uh, and where I should move to get even closer. Uh, so, this is exactly how the model is trained, actually. Uh, so, uh, probably, uh, yeah, some other jokes. I uh, specifically made the presentation f f full of some funny things, so you, it won't be boring for you. So, um, this is exactly how the model is trained. Uh, and uh, the, the most interesting is that uh, we it's close to how it really is. For example, there is a joke like interviewer asked, what's your biggest strengths? Uh, the candidate respond, responds, I'm the expert of machine learning. What's nine plus 10? It's three. No, it's 16. No, it's 18. No, it's 19. Okay, you're hired. Because 
the candidate demonstrated uh, clearly how the machine learning is um, is working. Okay, uh, let's go down. Uh, let's go uh, further. So uh, the machine learning uh, falls into two um, types: it's supervised learning and unsupervised learning. By the way, uh, it's a question to all the audience. Uh, I need your response in the chat. How do you feel uh, this game we played uh, is more tending to supervised learning or unsupervised learning? Just uh, okay, one, 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 supervised. So no one voted for unsupervised so far. Okay, yeah, pr pretty much you are you are right. Uh, it's more tending to to supervised learning. What is actually a difference? Um, supervised learning has a pre-categorized data, pre-categorized and used for predictions. Uh, unsupervised learning is used for unlabeled. If the data is unlabeled, and is used for patterns and structures. For example, uh, when we are uh, uh, when something, for example, I don't know, the house has a large number of features, uh, characteristics, let's say square footage and uh, crime rate in the region, general e economic prospering in the country and so on and so forth. There can be uh, tens or thousands or hundreds of, of this. This is a characteristics and the fancy name of it in machine learning world, world is uh, features. So all these um, things that characterizes the product is called features. And uh, the resulting thing that we want to, uh, to derive, for example, the house price, we want to predict uh, the house price. This is a label. So the machine learning engineers operate the terms features and label. Label is kind of the correct answer, right? Uh, on the examples on which the machine learning model will be trained. So uh, here, there is a bunch of labeled data. Here, you don't have the labeled data at all. Uh, and this is uh, kind of more detailed approach. So as we already discussed uh, here, you have uh, supervised learning, you have pre-configurized data and uh, on, in unsupervised learning, the data is unlabeled at all. Uh, and this here, it is used for predications and here some structure and patterns. For example, uh, for, okay, I will give you the example later probably. Um, and uh, let's, let's take a look at, for example, supervised learning sample problem. So we are feeding the model of a bunch of uh, uh, cat uh, images, chicken images, dog image, uh, images, uh, let's say, I don't know, several uh, hundred of thousands, and feed it to, to the algorithm. Uh, it uh, takes some patterns, and then uh, when, uh, when we feed, feed something new, um, uh, and uh, we, we ask the model, uh, so what, what types of visuals do we have? So the, we expect the model to predict that this is a dog, this is a chicken, this is a cat. Um, uh, so, uh, but only among these classes. It's important because we here, we provided uh, the model only three classes. Uh, the class cat, the class chicken, the class dog. If we then provide, uh, we, 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 we will want to, for a model to predict, I don't know, the class for a space shuttle, it just won't understand you. It, uh, it might show, I don't know, 1% of confidence for chicken, 1% of confidence for dog, and some, percent, some low percentage for a cat. So on which classes we train, uh, these exact classes, it is possible for, um, for, a, a, for an algorithm to, uh, to classify. What is, for example, the sample problem for an unsupervised learning without um, uh, pre-trained data? It means that uh, it just trains based on, on their experience. For example, the, if the customer uh, one buys bread, milk, and some other things, 
customer too also uh, buys bread milk and some other th things which are different from customer ones then if the customer three buys bread uh, the model is already know that he is most likely to buy also milk and that uh, then based on its decision uh, based on this i don't know pattern it's possible for uh, marketers for a business to respond in such a way, I don't know, to to milk, uh, to uh, place some hints, to um, place some banners. That's just maybe it, maybe you would want to buy bread and so on, and and hence uh, uh, raise the level of, of profits. Um, okay, or for example, a good a good also good question to a good problem for unsupervised learning is, for example, um, referring friends in social networks. For example, uh, there is there can be um, some millions of users in some social network, and we want these uh, users to be classified by, by clusters, cluster of, I don't know, uh, people who work together, who study together, who, who living in the same city, and so on. And based on this, we want, uh, we, as, as a social uh, platform developers, we can predict and uh, refer uh, friends to, to one another. So something like this. Okay. Uh, of course, we will, on this lecture, we will uh, more, more be concentrating on supervised learning as it is more simple for understanding. Uh, so two main uh, problems which uh, supervised learning and machine learning uh, solve here is a regression and a classification. So um, classification, what we, uh, what we already discussed, is uh, separating all the data sets. You see these points. It's all the uh, uh, examples we feed into the model. We want uh, uh, some, uh, the model to predict and to draw some line to differentiate between those two classes. Um, and the regression is just, uh, we, we want the model to, uh, to predict some number. So the difference between those two, uh, in uh, here, both here and here, all these dots represent the uh, examples, training examples on which, on which the model is trained. But here, we want the model to recognize several classes to fall um, uh, to classify which um, which training class is associated to each example and here we want to uh, predict the number without any classes without anything is just uh, the number can be uh, a result here is limited to the continuum of classes number of classes here it is two right and here the result can be a number from I don't know zero to to infinity, um, and uh, concerning this, uh, there is a bunch of uh, of uh, different algorithms, both for regression and classification. But we will not dive deep into this because it is kind of more advanced topics here. Um, okay, uh, guys, I need pluses that you are not sleeping. If you're still here, if you're still interested, plus, minus, someone is sleeping. <laughs> okay, um, great. So uh, moving on. First, first, before we step step in, maybe a, a little dive deep into the algebra and calculus. Uh, I, I just to um, uh, to uh, want to show you that. Uh, Maybe you know, maybe not. Maybe you know from from the uh, school course of algebra or from from calculus that, for example, any number, literally any straight line, can be uh, described with this equation: y equals mx plus b. M and b here is uh, some uh, parameters that can be. Um, uh, is, that can be actually modified. For example, I'm setting here instead of M, I'm setting zero and I'm setting B zero. So you see that uh, the number right now is uh, placed exactly on X axis. 
right now I want to play, I will play with B and you will see what is um, what happens to the line. Plus one, plus B, sorry, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus, I don't know, seven, minus seven, minus five. So probably you get the point, uh, what is happening to the line if we change this B parameter. We are kind of uh, moving what we already have here to the uh, up or down, right? To the top or to the bottom. Okay, let's play with, with the first parameter. 1x, 2x, 5, 10, um, 0 0.5. Oh, sorry. Let's switch to English. 0 0.5, 0 0.1. One and for example minus zero point one. So we played with with these two parameters, and uh, I, I think it's quite uh, obvious that uh, any straight line, literally any straight line, can be uh, described with with this equation. There is no straight line, provided of course that it is straight, uh, that cannot be described with this equation. And uh, so uh, this, this number represents kind of the slope. If it's big, then the slope, this is big. Let's say, I don't know, 10. Yeah, so uh, the, this angle is big. If, and this is kind of moving up or down. Um, okay, so um, and if we if we know that this uh, let me get back to the presentation uh, if we uh, know that uh, th this uh, regression can be described with with straight line uh, we just have to pick these numbers we just have to um, kind of uh, we we want the model to uh, to grab. Uh, and to, to pick these two numbers correctly, M and B. Um, so what's happening under the hood? Uh, it initialized with a random number, exactly as we did in the game. A line is uh, far from, uh, from representing where the data points is heading, so it's completely random. Um, there is a uh, there is uh, uh, some way in, in the algebra to uh, to uh, receive the feedback. What uh, what direction should I uh, sh should I actually take? And and the grade wh whether uh, I'm distant too distant from the correct answer or not. It's uh, it's called a derivative. So uh, I think we won't uh, kind of again dive deep here. If you are interested, you you, you may. Uh, probably Google it when uh, there is much more data on this. But the but the main point, uh, here on the derivative. So let's say here is M. This is exactly our M, which picked uh, just completely randomly. Um, this red is the um, uh, cost function. So the cost function is. Uh, yeah, one more thing, no, uh, which is uh, more important. The best uh, line here. Uh, we how, how do we know that that this picked line is uh, is the best? The distance between the data points and the line will be the smallest. So, for example, here we know that it is not uh, not the best, but here is better, 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 and. Here is the best because, for example, here the distance, or even uh, sometimes it, you, it it is used uh, square distance to penalize uh, great uh, large distance from the point to the line. So the sum of square distances to uh, from the data point to the line is the minimum, and uh, the, this uh, this is the uh, graph for, for this cost function, and. Um, if if we draw the derivative line uh, e, e, with provided parameters, this angle, this angle, will will just point us whether we should move 
up or down because it may be uh, like with plus sign or with minus sign if it's on this side of the equation. And uh, how it is big, if, uh, if this angle is large, we know that we are kind of far from, uh, from, from uh, finding the local, from, from finding the minimum. And uh, here you may see that uh, from time to time, uh, it's getting close and this angle also reduces. So uh, by based on this question, based on, on this analysis, the uh, model is kind of knows that uh, the, it's on the right track, some, some, some kind of this. Um, okay. Sometimes it can lead to some uh, unwanted behavior because clearly here, if if the cost function uh, line is uh, kind of more complex than than just a straight line or the uh, previous one simple, uh, we see that the minimum on which the model stops can uh, can depend on uh, on the point of the random initialized point. So yeah, this is the disadvantage of of this, but. Um, there are some ways to overcome it, but we won't dive deep into, into this. By the way, uh, our algorithm we are uh, right now taking a look at is, is called gradual descent algorithm. Um, okay. So uh, concerning the learning rate, learning rate is the step we should go to this direction. So, for example, okay, we know that uh, the distance is far, and we have to uh, we ha have to uh, I don't know uh, go with the large steps. But if we pick learning rate too low, we will uh, in in our game with Natalia, it, it would mean that from one uh, from five five hundred my firstly initialized parameter, I will. Uh, continue going up by only one. For example, next, my guess will be 501, 502, 503, and uh, it, it would took forever for me to go to uh, 837, the correct answer. Uh, on the contrary, if the learning rate is too high, so here uh, the learning rate is too, too slow, if the learning rate is too high, um, I'd, I would as a model, I would always over jump the correct answer. So uh, I will keep jumping, I don't know, from uh, 500 to, to 1000, then uh, provided, uh, then Natalia would provide me the result that uh, I should go down and uh, I, I would uh, go, uh, go to 500, then uh, again to 1000, 500, 1000, and I, I wouldn't uh, reach her number. Uh, actually, because uh, my learning rate would be too too high, as it is uh, depicted right here, uh, we 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 are not even getting close to the minimum, but we are getting far further. So it's kind of the um, uh, tries and attempts to pick the exactly the learning rate, which enables the system to to get to the minimum in the reasonable number of epochs. Yeah, by the way, the training iterations is called epochs uh, on the machine learning la language. So whenever you see uh, epochs, uh, know that it is just a fancy name for uh, the tra training iterations. Um, okay, uh, moving on, this is, uh, not not much concerning uh, concerning the presentation um, concerning environments yeah uh, from the algebra we know that it is 2d 3d 6d 100d and oh my god and uh, I, I I just uh, when I firstly saw this uh, this bunch of of different dimensions uh, I I was so puzzled I thought that like, Wow, where can where uh, where it can be used in the modern world or something? But uh, it turns out that the machine learning is direct application of the uh, multi-dimensional environments. For example, if we are um, predicting the price of a house, 
based on uh, just based on square footage. On on uh, x axis we have a square footage actually, and the, for y we have price. That is this is 2D model. If we uh, add additional characteristic, for example, crime rate in the district, there th there will be 3D. If some other bunch of characteristics, it will be 6D and 100D and so on. So uh, if uh, if you have, um, I don't know, 100 characteristics uh, of the house and uh, and you want it to, uh, to, to make the model to predict the price, you are actually handling 101 dimensional environment. Of course, it's hard to visualize, but we even do not do, do not need it. We just have to apply the same uh, approach that that is uh, applicable to two D or three D environment to this uh, multi-dimensional environment, uh, whatever dimension it it might have. Um, okay, okay. So yeah, but by the way, the question to the audience, uh, maybe you remember from the uh, course of uh, algebra from calculus, what essence or what topic in, uh, in algebra helps us uh, handling uh, different uh, dimensions, multi-dimensions, 2D, 3D, and so on. Any guesses? Is it matrices? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Thanks a lot. Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely correct. Mat matrices. And um, for example, if you probably uh, sometimes you, you you would want to feed uh, some uh, these uh, Excel or, or the, some kind of um, tables here. This is uh, exactly the matrix, and uh, these uh, matrices and the uh, libraries built uh, to to handle uh, fit exactly to uh, to solve machine learning uh, problems. Um, okay, let's uh, move move on. Uh, just on these two slides, we will take a look at uh, what uh, just a, a, an approximate stage of solving machine learning problems. So, of course, it's data mining first. You you either have CSV or have some database query on some unloading from analytical systems. Then you have a data preparation. By the way, uh, oftentimes in the real machine learning uh, projects, this data preparation part uh, takes most of the time. Uh, I don't know, 50 or 60 or 70 percent. Uh, we have to pick the distribution between train and test data because um, if you have, uh, uh, I don't know, 10 examples, you will not train on all the 10, all, on 10 examples. You would want to train on eight examples and then use two remaining examples to check whether the, uh, whether the training uh, or went successfully and whether the uh, learning rate is uh, is uh, kind of good or or, or 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 not for or not for this project so uh, the distribution can be from uh, 50 50 to most likely 70 30 or even to 80 20. Uh, you have to deal with NA or blank strategy. Uh, maybe you would want to delete this. Um, NA is just uh, kind of when you uh, when you have NA in some cells. Sometimes you would want to delete the whole row or initialize it with with some uh, variable. Formats check, uh, making sure that uh, the the number of of, of of these examples is enough. Uh, shuffle, you of course have to shuffle because sometimes when um, when you have these so, some kind of uh, this table, uh, you have uh, you have this already sorted. 
and it can be turned out that you, uh, for example, let's let's uh, imagine we have 14 examples. You uh, train on these 10 examples first, but this all 10 represents, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say Ukraine, the houses in Ukraine. And these four examples uh, represent, uh, I don't know, Poland. So you you want and you you uh, here you you will want to train it on Ukraine, but then check it against Poland. It's not the case. It's a bad practice. That's why it's always a good practice to shuffle them and to normalize the data. It's a, a additional uh, extremely uh, important point. Uh, what is normalization here? You see that some uh, whether uh, some columns may have the values from zero to one, like yes or no. Some kind of, some sometimes it can uh, have the values of one, two, and three, and some uh, sometimes from zero to continuum uh, to uh, some large amount, right? Uh, for example, here squared fo square footage. Hence. To, uh, to make it uh, uh, influence the model in, uh, in the uh, exact ratio, in the same ratio, we want these numbers to be spread equally between, let's say, uh, zero and one. Sometimes uh, between minus one and one, but more, more frequently between zero and one. Uh, so we are kind of squeezing all these numbers to the range of from zero to one, and these from the range to zero to one, and these from the range to zero. So you get the idea. So all the data is uh, is squeezed to the range from from zero to one, and then it is um, it, it can be easily to manip manipulate and more uh, exact to train. Of course, it can uh, must not be mutually dependent. Outlier strategy, outliers is, uh, for example, let's if the bedrooms here is three, four, two, and then in one example you see that the bedroom is I don't know 99. You may you may uh, check you may want to check whether it is uh, wrong or not. Maybe it's a good idea to uh, remove this example, or maybe it is. A real house that that has 99 bedrooms. So, um, but in this case, it can um, influence the model, the, these outliers. And of course, the garbage collecting. We will uh, speak about it in few words later. Uh, on whole stages, there is a visualization because it goes uh, like uh, so. It's intertwined with with ML. Good machine learning engineers uh, always uh, have a good skills at visualizing model uh, in different uh, under different angles and so on. Uh, what is next here? Is the stages of solving. We will not just dive deep into this, but uh, some of some of the steps you already know, some of them not. But we uh, we uh, have to specify how we are calculating the error. Um, pick the initial model variables or set them randomly. Right. Specify the number of epochs. Specify the um, uh, learning rate and so on. Uh, select some other um, things. And of course, avoid overfitting. What is, by the way, what is overfitting? Overfitting is, so this model is not overfitted. It is appropriate. It has appropriate fitting. Um, so uh, if, if we would visualize all these uh, marks here, we would want, we, we would uh, know just by our eyes that uh, straight line is not enough to represent the difference between circles and crosses, right? That's why we have to, uh, to foresee that this line will, uh, won't will have the equation of mx plus b, but will have some more uh, complex uh, equation. And this is overfitted because it uh, takes into account every possible uh, data point. And uh, if we if we will want to train, uh, sorry, to predict the uh, value based on this overfitted model, we won't uh, actually. It's a small probability that we will uh, get some valuable results here. So the best approach is here. 
it uh, it sees and it accepts some some errors, but uh, the level of these errors are acceptable, and this is the appropriate fit model. Um, let's move on to uh, to the languages and libraries. Of course, some uh, these uh, programming languages as R and Python shines in the, in the machine learning, uh, but uh, JavaScript catches up, and uh, in Python there, there are some um, great uh, libraries like NumPy, SciPy for calculation, Pandas, TensorFlow for uh, let's say for machine learning projects. Uh, Scikit-learn has machine learning algorithms predefined, uh, ready to use. Matplotlib for visualization. Uh, JavaScript has also uh, all, uh, also a bunch of different um, libraries. Uh, the one of the most uh, popular here is TensorFlow.js, which is a branching of uh, Python's TensorFlow, but in specifically for JavaScript. And uh, of course, uh, many, many, many for visualization and uh, for machine learning as well, but I didn't include it here. Um, so uh, one of the things, yeah, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, sometimes the benefit of the JavaScript is that it is a king of, of a front end and uh, you may train a model and store it exactly not uh, just on the server, but uh, uh, as well on the front end, in, uh, for example, in local storage, so that it, it, it will be possible to uh, use the model exactly uh, like purely on the front end. Sometimes it can be extremely handy. And uh, one more thing, uh, why, why do we just need all these libraries and so on if we can uh, uh, like use just the engine of JavaScript itself. For example, if um, if we are talking about matrices here, all we know that every matrices can be um, depicted as arrays of arrays. So why not just uh, handling arrays of arrays? Well, it turns out that uh, just the standard JavaScript uses CPU. It means that uh, all operation is done one at a time. So if we are, if we would want to to add these uh, multi-dimensional matrices with one another, every single cell will be uh, will be added or subtracted at one period of time. Instead, these uh, libraries mostly use GPU, with which are uh, just suitable for uh, for matrices for operations in parallel. And uh, for so yeah, in, in machine learning, it is much more uh, quicker and much more efficient to use uh, special libraries because it uh, also because it uses GPU instead of CPU. But uh, just keep in mind that sometimes you have to deal with garbage collecting by yourself because garbage collecting on GPU works uh, not as, as expected uh, as, as we would expect. So just uh, bear this in mind. Yeah, uh, so I guess we are done with, with the theoretical part and we may uh, dive deep into, uh, into the, um, get uh, our hands dirty with some code. Uh, I need pluses from you guys that you are still not sleeping, that it is still interesting for you. Wow, 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 wonderful, wonderful, great, great. It's always good, by the way, to receive a feedback. So thanks a lot for uh, providing this feedback to me. Um, so I think we just uh, ended with this one. Firstly, I will show you just one moment. Firstly, I will show this um, project here. It's a small regression tree. A regression, as you remember, means that we are not classifying something. We're just predicting the number, right? And this is actually all the script I have. You see that uh, th this is nothing fancy about this project. So I just uh, included uh, this CDN here 
with the help of CDN, I included the TensorFlow library and just use it. So this is the um, example of this being used uh, purely on the front end. Um, so what do we have? Here we have a, a training. Here, here we specify the number of epochs. Um, here we just make a, some configuration to, to some model. Here we compile. So, um, uh, by the way, this uh, 0 .9, 0 0.1 is a learn, learning rate. Uh, so, what do we have? Here is uh, axis and here is y's. And for appropriate input, we have the appropriate output. This is a predefined result. For, uh, so, for example, if we feed the system minus one, we want the system to throw to uh, get back minus three. If, if two, then three, if four, then seven. Uh, uh, by the way, do you, uh, do you spot the, um, the pattern here? What should, we, uh, what should we do with axis to receive Ys? Just uh, feel free to unmute yourself or use, use your chat window. Maybe what? multiply by two and then minus one. Exactly, exactly. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Yaroslav. Yeah, uh, four times two, eight, minus one, seven, minus one times two, minus two, minus one, minus three. So yeah, exactly. To transform y, x into y, we have to apply this formula, times two, minus one. Uh, but our system does not know about it. We're just feeding, uh, if we would provide this exact equation, it would be a traditional programming. But we are, uh, we are here to study some machine learning. That's why we are providing only the examples. And afterwards, we want to predict what y should it give uh, return if the input is 10. So obviously, the return should be 19, right? Um, let's get to our, I will refresh the page here. And we will see, we are seeing that it is actually trained. We have 500 epochs, and here is the result. So we are very, 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 very close to 19. So it looks like it is a great uh, result from the system. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at this. On the epoch zero in the first iteration, it has the loss of seven, quite large loss. Then uh, the loss uh, goes less, less, less and then uh, even less, and then even less. So we are getting to even, uh, you see this scientific nota notation, which uh, signifies that it is 14 digits uh, before this dot. So we end up getting extremely uh, small loss rate here. But uh, let's uh, manipulate with some learning rate, and I will show you what happens if we, for example, take uh, 100 less uh, learning rate than we used to. I'm refreshing once again. And that's it. So uh, uh, firstly, it gives us the incorrect response because it uh, wouldn't able to reach the minimum. And if we will take a look at how it learns, well, it learns quite poorly because uh, on the first epoch, the loss is seven, uh, seven point five. Previously, it was in the uh, our previous example, it was seven, right? But uh, previously, on epoch one, it is it was below zero, and right now it just reduces too steeply, six point three, six point two, six point one, and so on. So the direction is good, but the steps of approaching the minimum is incredibly insufficient. You see, uh, in, in when when the epoch number is, uh, when it actually finished training, the uh, loss is uh, quite big. And on contrary, let's take a look at some large learning rate. For example, one point, I don't know, let's try 1.3. Oh, and uh, so our model just broke. We will, we will, uh, let's see what happened to, to, to this. 
Firstly, the loss was three, then 474, then 1,000, then millions. So it's not even getting uh, down, it's getting up. So, so this is the great example uh, of how, uh, how we, uh, we might hurt if, uh, if the learning rate is, uh, is too, uh, too high. Uh, of course, there, there are uh, algorithms uh, which do not need learning rate, but we won't uh, touch it in, in this lecture. Um, so what, what I also want you to take a look at is this. Um, this is a Python. And uh, this is a naive bias classification. So there is an algorithm called naive bias that uh, is perfectly suitable for, uh, for example, for um, uh, classification. For example, for classification, whether the, your email received is ham or spam. So spam is a bad email and ham is kind of not spam, right? Uh, let's take a look, just one moment. Let's take a look at uh, what it is here. We, we actually won't, probably won't dive deep into this, but um, yeah, here is the class uh, naive bias and the uh, two, main, uh, uh, two main methods is fit and predict. So pretty, pretty simple. Uh, and so I pre I already pre-trained it because it takes time. So it is already trained, and now we we will want to to make a actually prediction for the email that consists of just three letters, three key uh, words, free, final, and urgent. So obviously it marks it is marks uh, of of the spam, right? So let's run it here. As we see, the ham probability is even below 1% and spam probability is 99.9. .9. So this, the model is pretty sure that this, uh, this um, message is spamish, right? Let's add some, some uh, additional words. In, in this case, marking that it is ham, not spam. For example, what, what words? Can, can, can be added here. For example, uh, the word milk. Let's imagine that, uh, I don't know, white, wife writes to the husband for him not to, to forget to buy, to buy some milk and bread. Uh, let's run it on this example. So I'm uh, leaving these uh, three Spanish words here, but adding one Hamish. Again, spam. Let's play it with, with the word bread. It's pretty sure that it is spam because of these three words. But uh, as you see, the probability is kind of decreasing with each iteration. Let's uh, change uh, some of these three words. Here, for example, I will write dear. Again, it's pretty sure that it is spam, but uh, not, not as sure as was before, right? Uh, 97 to 2%. Uh, word final, we will, uh, I don't know, uh, we will just uh, remove this. Now the spam probability is 77. Now I will, uh, I will remove this word. And right now the hem wins. Uh, now the system without these words, the system knows that it's actually 95% sure that it is ham, not spam. So it is a good email, not the spam. Okay, moving on to our next neural network. Neural network is kind of special, um, um, uh, how to say it's special case of, of machine learning. We will not dive deep into this, uh, but uh, I already also already pre-trained it. Here, the uh, essence is to, uh, to visualize some, um, sorry, not visualize, but um, 
uh, uh, we want the system to, to differentiate the handwritten uh, digits here. For example, here the digit is nine. Uh, let's, we have actually here, we have a bunch of digits in some um, fancy encoding um, way. So I will not show you these, uh, these exact uh, images with the uh, digits, but, but we have uh, indices here. Uh, I will write, I will try to write it, I don't know, to number 67. Let's take a look at what digits is here. It's handwritten three. And let's run this cell. Yeah, it understands that the digits digit is three. Let's play it with once again, I don't know, 167. It's, I don't know, nine or something. But yeah, the system thinks it's seven. Uh, something else. Uh -huh, yeah, uh, actually it has a true label of nine, but the system in this case gave uh, error. So it, it marks by seven. Um, error itself it's, it is not always bad. It's just uh, maybe the system accepts some levels of errors as we, uh, as we uh, saw in the example of overheating, uh, overfitting. Here is eight and the system understands it's, it's eight. For example, uh, here uh, you probably uh, know that there are some sites for uh, some image recognition. Uh, I prepared here two images for, for, for this. Let's play with the dog. Come on. Okay. So uh, it's just pretty confident that it is a pug, canine, dog. Pet, mammal, right? Animal. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And and by the way, notice this network request made when I pasted uh, specified the image. Clearly, see that this model is uh, stored in the server. And uh, in order to make a prediction, we have to to make a request to the server. Uh, if it would be stored, the model. I mean, if it would be stored in the local storage it could be possible to, to not send a request to, to, to the um, server. Let's play with cactus. So this is the original image. Okay, here we go. So it is 99% confidence that it is uh, some plant. Uh, you, you see that uh, it al already also it grasps uh, the uh, topics which we did not predefined actually, for example, that it is some generic cross confidence or some just random symbol. So yeah, uh, it's, it becomes quite popular nowadays. Uh, and probably uh, last, what I wanted to show you here is this TensorFlow Playground uh, website. It's, uh, Pretty interesting to play with, with TensorFlow here. Uh, I will show you. So uh, I already got rid of hidden layers. It can be possible to, uh, to visualize, uh, to, to run it on both classification and regression problems. Let it be classification. Uh, we, we see that the ratio of training to test data, we can, we can select. Uh, let it be 80 to 20, and the noise. Uh, you see, if the noise uh, degree is zero, so that it is exactly all uh, data points grouped uh, without any intertwined, right? I will uh, specifically add some noise so that uh, this line is uh, kind of more uh, ambiguous here, and we will run this model. Yeah, for example, notice for uh, this is the random model initiation. Uh, you see this uh, backgrounds. It, it is not um, described. It does not describe the difference between all these data points. But when we run in each epoch, as the system trains, 
the uh, the system is able to to differentiate between them and we see that the model is uh, the loss is quite loss rate is quite low um, let's take a look at at some more advanced uh, data distribution right here it's uh, for me it's kind of clear and obvious that uh, this distribution cannot be described by just a plain straight line. That's why we need to uh, to uh, predefine something more fancy that, than just mx plus b. And here I will try to to run it. You see, it is it, it ran, but since we predefined only uh, two parameters here, it is not enough for a system to to differentiate. That's why the, the, the differentiation itself goes pretty bad and the loss rate is quite uh, quite big and does not increase uh, sorry does not decrease with time uh, let's in this case let's add some more parameters here I will add we are playing so uh, I'm free to uh, to put more parameters and let's uh, do it once again this time, we we see that it's uh, it is able to pretty good uh, differentiate between two classes. Um, yeah, but for example, if we uh, if we get back to some more simple uh, uh, data distribution as it was before, like the, uh, the this. We will run it, and what we see that uh, the data distribution is uh, kind of simple here. Is st straight line is uh, a good representation of the differentiation between uh, these uh, two classes. But since we placed a lot of uh, parameters right here, it is nothing. Uh, this model is overfit. So if 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 we go go it once again, we see it jumping and then making some curves and so on. Uh, it just is, uh, signifies our, us that this model is overtrained, so uh, overfit. Sorry, overfit, and we have to disable all the additional parameters. Run it once again, and this. Um, uh, now now uh, the uh, complexity of the uh, line looks good okay so um uh just uh, we are coming to the wrap up and uh, right now guys if there is only few things you will bring out from this meeting let it be the following conclusions so the first one every model every literally model can be represented with an equation. This equation can be simple or it can be complex, no matter how many dimensions you have, two or one million. This equation uh, has some parameters, like in our case, M and B. Uh, parameters are initialized randomly, oftentimes. On each training iteration, the model compares the result got from the uh, current parameters in this in the first step it is random and the real uh, correct answers and it seeks to minimize in this error and um, when the minimum is found model is trained and can be used for further predictions so it can also be stored on both front end and back end uh, what i got in my last slides for, for further reading i would definitely recommend kaggle it's a great resource for the ready uh, ready to use data sets they also run some competitions here uh, tensorflow playground uh, i uh, this one we took a look at here andrew ng or ng so it's not a mistake it's uh, his surname one of the best courses on, for example, on Coursera. 
uh, Udemy machine learning course specifically for JavaScript engineers. Uh, I finished it uh, recently. So it's uh, also accessible in our uh, soft serve uh, Udemy. And uh, some funny video uh, concerning the artificial intelligence, how it learns to drive uh, from scratch in the game Trackmania. Uh, it's uh, quite interesting to take a look on those. And uh, I guess that's it, guys. Uh, if there is any questions, I will be glad to, to answer them. Okay, I see some of some of them. Um, Ruslan asks, how to calculate an error? Uh, I, the, I could repeat. Uh, you know, yeah. just could you please give an example how we could estimate the error of our function of our model? You know, uh, I could imagine how we calculate an error. For example, in regression, yes, we could uh, estimate this distance, yes, to the average yeah, line, yeah. for example. Yeah, mm -hmm. but what about uh, image recognition or, for example, symbol recognition? How how is estimated? Uh, you see, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, good question. It uh, the, in our case, the image recognition is built on a neural network. We didn't touch neural network within this uh, lecture because it's kind of entry level. But uh, if uh, if you uh, if it, if this topic of image recognition is interesting to you, I would definitely recommend you to dive deep into neural networks. This has something to do with uh, adding uh, some. Uh, probably I will get into uh, get back into TensorFlow Playground. You see these hidden layers. You may add some and. Uh, the neurons here needs an activation function, which in um, uh, in, uh, in 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 some ways it, it is the prediction of whether uh, one neuron has an output of one or zero and transmit the results to uh, to other neurons and uh, down the line down the line until the uh, image is recognized. So. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I answered your questions correctly, but I, I would definitely recommend you to to uh, to to go to this topic of of neural networks here. Okay, thanks. Can I ask you one more question? Sure, go uh, ahead. Is it is it right that if we need uh, um, models like uh, machine learning models for our business base basic business? Uh, we can find it in the internet. It you no, know? so we don't need uh, to to build it from the scratch. You no, know? you could find it in the internet. What do you think about that? Uh, For example, uh, there are a lot of models recognition. You know, symbols. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think I got your question. Uh, the I think that le levels of uh, of complexity of uh, of these models. Uh, is different. Uh, there are some uh, simple models, for example, just for for the, uh, the, the I don't know image recognition or something. Of course, you can use it, and we there are some predefined stored in uh, in some instruments. Okay, I won't dive deep into this right now, but yeah, you you may uh, you may try to um, uh, to fit it into your business needs. Um, but uh, of course, you, you you have to double check whether the uh, error rate is appropriate for you. But uh, for some more, I don't know, fancy model, if if you have, for example, if you are uh, working for a mobile mobile operator and you want to uh, to classify all your customers into, I don't know, heavy mobile users, uh, rare mobile users, and so on, or some. Um, uh, level of uh, of i don't know well wealth of uh, of your customers that's why uh, in this case i i'm not sure you will find something similar in the internet so you you will be you would want to uh, to to create by something by yourself okay thanks very much no worries thanks 
Any okay. other questions? We yeah. have one more question in the chat from Yuri Koval. If we use uh, TensorFlow JS in the browser, how does it perform? Um, well, since the mo since the model is uh, already trained, uh, the uh, just asking for a prediction is uh, incredibly uh, like uh, quick. So uh, the the most time cons uh, time consuming thing in uh, when you are dealing with model is training. Sometimes it, uh, for example, I I know that uh, uh, you, you may uh, if you if you train in the chess, for example, sometimes you uh, you will want to uh, download some chess rules into the model and leave it uh, play for for the whole night or for a couple of days. Uh, with with uh, computer uh, versus computer to 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 get the experience so this is uh, something which can be um uh, of the i don't know not not so quick but uh, if you have already pre-trained model just to use it is incredibly quick okay um one more question where and how to store trained model or data? Uh, to be honest, I'm not the, as I dis described in the beginning, I'm not the expert in machine learning. There are uh, some instruments uh, called Keras. Uh, there, you, you may want to 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 Google that, and it's um, uh, the file. Um, what you call it? Um, extension is h5 for example so in the h5 is the pre-trained model can be stored uh, and uh, i was uh, witnessed uh, one one time it was storing uh, in the uh, local storage for example if you will uh, i will show it once again just one moment if you will finish this course uh looks like they have something similar it looks like the instructor here uh, saves the uh, model purely on a browser inside the local storage but actually the main point is that it is actually possible so how to do this uh, it's another question i personally i didn't uh, dive deep into this i uh, never stored uh, models but it's possible to do this on both back end and front end. Thanks, Vyacheslav. Any other questions, guys? Well, no if questions. No, if, if no, we may call it a meeting. <laughs> <laughs>